Trump v. United States is the decision that came down last. The worst part about it, aside from like Trump's insanity, is that we just don't have any sort of like uh, legal mechanisms that could uh, that could technically combat this like. Here. Trump will become the 47th president of the United States. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. So I think we should start off by just saying what's happening. And then my big question is going to be, how should we be thinking about this? Donald Trump is returning to the White House. American voters have seen what Trump had to offer, and at least a critical mass of them decided they want to do the same thing again. I called up some colleagues at Vox to ask what we should be making of this moment, and I ended up spending a long time talking to Zach. I'm Zach Beecham. I'm a senior correspondent at Vox. Zach writes about reactionary politics, the right wing, basically. And the thing that he really wanted me to understand is that even though the outcome of this election is the same as the 2016 election, the Trump, who is about to become president, is different. Donald Trump is much more organized. He knows what he's doing has a series of distinct policy objectives that he's reiterated again and again, it will be in a lot of ways fundamentally different than what we all lived through four years ago. Lock up the Bidens, lock up Hillary, lock them up. The first time Trump was president, he wanted to do all sorts of very controversial things, and a lot of times he didn't actually end up doing them. One big example is wanting his critics and political opponents to be prosecuted. He was constrained by other parts of the political system, the guardrails of democracy. I'm Andrew Prokop. I cover politics. The guardrails encompass, first, Congress and the court. But also within the executive branch, you have. Oh, yeah, that's Zach Bochamp. I know. I already dunked on him. You'll miss the liberal international order when it's gone, he said, without even a fucking hint of irony. Kaya, place. Like, not even a shred of irony from that guy. It's like, it, what, a, what a ridiculous fucking assessment. What a ridiculous situation. The post is unavailable. No, it's still available. I like that. As a destiny, we become a more prominent figure. Uh, uh, everyone, everyone knows, like, like at, least at least some, some of his shenanigans, shenanigans. You know what I mean? So instantly, everyone's like, nah, we're good. We're good. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I said, like, like I said, it's ridiculous. Israel is uh, Trump's own appointees for top positions who often last time around proved unwilling to carry out some of the things he wanted to do. Then you also have the permanent civil service career employees that he can't fire at will. First of all, the courts have grown more conservative and more Trump friendly since he put three of his own appointees in the Supreme Court. Congressional Republicans have grown much more pro-Trump. Trump and the people around him want hardcore MAGA true believers staffing the government who will not have these pesky qualms about legality or ethics or things like that. And regarding the civil service, Trump wants to use an executive order to reclassify thousands of people with civil service protections against firing as political appointees who he can fire to then put in a lot of MAGA loyalists in their place instead. He's had four years to basically stew over, you know, what he didn't get to do last time and uh, what um, he would do differently if he was given another chance. And now he will seemingly get that chance. We're going to have the largest deportation in the history of our country. The mantra that Trump had on the border on 2016 was build the wall. That was his centerpiece of his immigration platform. That sort of changed over the course of his presidency. And increasingly, he wanted to turn his intention not to the border, but to the interior of the U.S., the undocumented population here. I'm Nicole Norea, and I cover politics and immigration for Vox. Under Biden, there were record levels of people arriving on the border. We've seen those numbers come down significantly in 2024, but when Americans are polled, large portions of them say that they want mass deportations. They might be thinking about people being deported immediately after. The real question is not, do you support mass deportation of undocumented migrants? The real question is, between the two options, would you support mass amnesty or mass deportation? 
and Americans overwhelmingly say they want mass amnesty over mass deportation. That's it. So many Americans just like don't understand what mass deportation entails. They don't understand how fucking devastating that will be. And I'm not just talking about the fucking economy, okay? I'm talking about the real human toll. Ever since I heard AOC say the 1 in 15 number, I've been repeating it. 1 in 15 households in the United States have uh, are mixed status households, as in there's one undocumented member, at least, in said household. That would mean going into 1 in 15 homes and forcibly ripping these people away from their immediate family members. 1 in 15 people. They arrive on the border, um, but that's not what Trump's contemplating. He's trying to go into communities across the U.S., and we're talking about people who have lived here, you know, for years and decades. That would sort of involve huge investments in, in law enforcement and also the cooperation of local law enforcement agencies, which I'm not sure we would see necessarily in Democratic states, but let's say in states like Texas and Florida, certainly you might find law enforcement willing to cooperate with federal immigration authorities there. A landmark decision in American history as it relates to presidential power. When Trump initially took office, the median vote on the Supreme Court was a moderate conservative, someone who would draw the line somewhere. Then Trump appointed a third of the United States Supreme Court. I'm Ian Milheiser. I cover the Supreme Court at Fox. Trump v. United States is the decision that came down last. The worst part about it, aside from like Trump's insanity, is that we just don't have any sort of like uh, legal mechanisms that could uh, that could technically combat this. Like, I feel like the ACLU is gutted. Like, I don't think they have the same motion as they once did. You know what I mean? Like, we have no, we have no way of, of fighting back against this kind of shit. Like, when they, when they take over all these institutions, it's going to be fucking bedlam. Do you think he would revoke DACA? I think I'm going to renew my DACA this week, a year early of the two years renewal. Um, I don't think, I mean, DACA is so profoundly popular, but so was abortion. And they took that shit away. So, I don't know. Last July, concerning Special Prosecutor Jack Smith's um, indictment of Trump for trying to steal the 2020 presidential election. Trump made this really outlandish argument that he could not be charged with the crime for any official acts he committed while president. Pretty much everyone thought that that argument was silly and ridiculous and there was no chance that the court would ever adopt it. And then all six of the Republican justices adopted it. What that decision said, it, it said that Donald Trump is immune from criminal prosecution for crimes that he commits using the official powers of office. Trump is allowed to give any order he wants to the Department of Justice. The basic matter is just that anything he does can potentially be beyond the scope of the criminal justice process. More than 40,000 Palestinians killed since the October 7th Hamas massacre Right now, the situation on the ground in Gaza is an extraordinary humanitarian crisis and a moral stain on the United States uh, for enabling so much of this to happen. But it can always get worse. Trump has a blank check approach to Israel. He and his advisors don't believe in any of the even feeble restraints that the Biden administration had put on Israeli conduct. There are factions inside the Israeli government that have different visions of how to conduct the war. The extreme right on Netanyahu's flank, people like Bezalel Smotrich and Itamar Ben-Gavir believe that Trump will let them do what they want. Is there a restraint? Where was the restraint? Where I must have missed it. Just like strong strong stern words that's that's what it was is that what it was yeah i love i love restraining my fucking attack dog in the region by giving them another 18 billion dollars of weapons dude can't help yourself at this point can you what what do you mean the f who the fuck do you think you are what are you, what are you talking about like what i'm not allowed to talk about israel now because in my my former podcast co-host is gonna fucking chirp at me and say i'm anti-semitic shit bro my bad dude yeah surely i'll get banned eventually dude if you if you post more out of context clips it, it'll happen fucking weirdo what do you mean no don't ban him i want to know what he means <sighs> i don't i don't know what the happened what do you mean spitting fire uh i don't know hold on i'll tell you
Uh, 20 minutes. Sound like a mob boss? Maybe he didn't mean anything by it. I'm gonna unban him. Anyway, let's continue. Based on what he said to say and what his political coalition at home wants. Are you on yeah. board with the way the IDF is taking the fight to Ga in Gaza? You've got to finish the problem. These people have a maximalist vision of what they want the war to be. Actually seizing and taking Gaza for Israel and returning to settlement, right, to rebuilding. It's so funny to like be an upset, just saying we're at the point where we're facing a much greater danger in the realm from the hogs. Wait, what? what? Dog, the reason why fucking Trump won, at least the state of Michigan and perhaps other states as well, is a direct consequence of Biden not ever enforcing any fucking restraint on Israel. It's over. The election is lost. And Biden and Kamala Harris are to thank for that defeat. What do you mean? Move past it. The fuck? It's quite literally a major part of the reason why this election was lost to begin with. I just realized your merch site literally has a go vote link on top, right? And people tr still try to say you don't go vote. Yeah, it does. Ideology that shop. Israeli outposts moving Israeli Jewish citizens in to make sure that its control over the area never slips. That would mean not just temporary eviction of Gazans from their homes and their cities, which would be bad enough. It would mean creating a massive permanent refugee population. Outside of Gaza, in the West Bank, we can only imagine previous American position has been you shall not under any circumstances annex parts of the West Bank. It would be Israel declaring it. Yeah, no, I know. Biden has been so cautious with Israel and so restrained with Israel that like if Benjamin Netanyahu were to do that, uh, he certainly would have been like, uh, 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 he would have been like, no, no, no. Not without another $8 billion of weapons, sir. That's what he would have done. He would have been like, be careful, Jack. Don't go in there without our weapons. What are you doing? In essence, it's willingness to rule over the Palestinians in perpetuity. What I do know for sure is that a Trump administration would do nothing to punish them for it. Yeah. It's a good thing Biden has really stopped Israel from really uh, increasing its grip on... on Occupied Palestinian territory that is also known as the West Bank, you know, but Trump will certainly let him even let him go crazy. Okay, let's make this quick. I'm Adam. I produced this video. I think it is fair to say this is a historic moment. Trump declared he would veto a national abortion ban if he's reelected. Trump winning the presidency is not good for abortion rights. I mean, he's been out there claiming that he's the father of IVF, that he's going to be great for women's rights. But he surrounds himself with lots of people who absolutely, you know, do not have that as their goal. I'm Rachel Cohen. I cover social policy at Vox, and I've been really focused on abortion rights for the last two and a half years since Roe was overturned. Something that has been confusing for voters is that I don't think we're going to see a federal ban coming out of Congress. The biggest way that Trump could, I think, use his executive power to restrict abortion rights is to push for the enforcement of the Comstock Act on the federal level. The Comstock Act was this law passed in 1873, and among other things, it banned mailing anything associated with abortion. When the Supreme Court legalized abortion nationwide, the Comstock Act was rendered moot. It didn't matter anymore. But Congress never actually repealed it. Now that Roe has been overturned, you have a bunch of conservatives, including J.D. Vance, who are saying now is the time actually to enforce this zombie law that's been on the books for decades that people forgot about, and we should ban anything associated with abortion from being sent in the mail. So that could include not only abortion pills, which are used in the majority of abortions in the U.S., but it could also mean any medical equipment associated with, you know, surgical abortion, like dilators or speculums. This is real. That would effectively mean a nationwide ban on abortion. Some might say it's economic nationalism. I call it common sense. The thing about tariffs is that the president has a lot of unilateral authority to impose them without Congress's will. I'm Eric Levitz and I write about politics and policy. A tariff is basically a tax on an imported good. Usually the producer passes on the cost of that tax to consumers um, by charging higher prices to compensate for the tax. Trump's signature proposal on tariffs in the 2024 campaign was a 10% tariff on all foreign imports, regardless of what country they come from and regardless of, of what kind of good it is, which includes things that the United States cannot possibly produce. There's no tax that you can put on foreign coffee beans 
that will make it possible to grow them in New England. The general consensus from economists is that this is going to significantly increase prices for Americans, as well as actually potentially undermining American manufacturing. I think that in general, voters tend to be sympathetic to any protectionist trade policy, but I think that in practice, as we've seen in the Biden years, voters are very sensitive to increases in consumer prices. On the other hand, though, this is something that Trump really genuinely seems to believe and hold as a, as a core economic principle, really since the late 1980s. We let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. Put a 25% tax on products that come into the United States. He's like, it's not free trade if they're selling to us. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. What is this fucking free trade nonsense? You think, you think that's how this works? <laughs> this is like international rule-based order okay you know we make the rules we give the orders y you follow them that's just how this works it's not how you must have been foolish to think you know you just do back and forth states so that means that trump plausibly could enact this tariff even if a majority of republicans in congress do not want him to it's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us it's time to unite and we're gonna try we're gonna try we have to try in any democratic system of government you need nonpartisan civil servants whose job it is to follow and implement the law a lot of that stuff is technical from national parks administration to the way the defense department is run to the way that we um, protect and store our nuclear weapons trump doesn't like this neutral rules of governance obstruct his ability to govern like a kind of machine politician who uses government as a tools of rewarding his friends and punishing his enemies. That's why he hates what he calls the deep state. Demolish the deep state. Obliterate the deep state. Dismantle the deep state. We could be in a world where very swiftly, because there are no legislative guardrails against this, what if the IRS is now a fully political agency and audits are coming in along political lines, businesses or media organizations that are critical of Trump start being harassed using the tax code as a means of punishing them. Think about everything that you rely on government to do. And now imagine those tasks being bent towards political ends. Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States again. And this time around, we'll make the first time look like child's play. What is this baby music they got playing? I don't, I know it's not the, the point, but I just 